three quarters saying that the economy is in bad shape and nearly 20 point lead for the Republican Party to handle it, to trust to handle it. Ha! 20 points for Republicans to handle the economy better. Goodness. Is the economy stupid? James Carville had it right. Jurassic Park, ladies and gentlemen. Jurassic Park. The rain is coming down. The people who are in charge of our country are old. They're incompetent. They are not able to handle the job. And Americans know it. They know that we are headed for disaster. We know that there are monsters at our door and at our gate. And that what these incompetent people have grown, created, and unleashed upon us will wreak havoc. That it will hurt all of us. And that is why Joe Biden is seeing a career low of 37% approval rating. Biden's job performance is at 55% disapproval. This according to an ABC News poll. Now, we say it again and again and again. These are suppression polls. These aren't real polls. These polls probably over-index by an order of 5 to 10% liberal opining, opinionating, and buoying the Democrat prospects because these polls have been broken time and time again. These are the kind of polls that showed Hillary Clinton winning 40 states, Joe Biden winning 40 states. These polls are, in their essence, fake and broken. But nonetheless, if Joe Biden is doing this bad in these kind of polls, how bad is it really? Just subtract 10%. So Joe Biden's more around 27% approval rating and more around 65% disapproval rating. What is there to approve of? Name a single thing. I put up on Twitter the other day and on Truth Social. We're on both. We hope you follow us on both. I put up on Twitter and Truth Social the other day. Name one thing that Joe Biden has done that has improved the lives of Americans. Not Guatemalans, not Ukrainians, not Germans, not Brazilians, not people who live in Antarctica. Americans. One thing, a single thing. Can you name a thing? Of course, no one could. Let's read the article from ABC News on Joe Biden's disastrous approval rating heading into the State of the Union tonight. Economic discontent is hurting President Joe Biden and his party's midterm election prospects, with six in 10 Americans reporting inflation hardships, three quarters saying that the economy is in bad shape, and nearly 20-point lead for the Republican Party to handle it, to trust to handle it. Ha! 20 points for Republicans to handle the economy better. Goodness. Is the economy stupid? James Carville had it right. Biden has other problems with underwater ratings for his handling of Ukraine, split on the pandemic, which was a very strong point for Joe Biden heading into his presidency, weak scores on personal attitudes, including leadership, handling of a crisis, crisis and mental sharpness. As we stated earlier, the doctors on Fox News, Dr. Mark Siegel, man, he talked about Joe Biden's gait, and I, we thought it was so interesting, the way Joe Biden walks. He, he noted that Joe Biden's history, uh, uh, medical history that is available to all of us, is that Joe Biden has had multiple aneurysms. In Hunter Biden's personal and private, uh, private communications with Hunter Biden's own medical professionals, they joke about Joe Biden overcoming dementia. What does that mean? We don't know. That's just the data. That's just what's out there. You make your own decisions. But as you watch Joe Biden walk with such a stiff robotic gait, the doctors, at least Dr. Mark Siegel, says, hey man, this is a, this is a common symptom of somebody who's mental, in mental decline. The fluidity of their gait, the smoothness of their walking shows mental decline. Listen to the doctors, right? Listen to the medical experts. That's what we've been told for the last two years. A 40% high in inflation leads to the headaches. Also, the multiple aneurysms probably lead to Joe Biden's headaches. Americans are twice as likely to say that they're worse off under his presidency. 35 to 17%. As a result, a career low 37% of Americans approve of Joe Biden's performance overall, with 55% disapproving. <laughs> 55% disapproval. That includes 30% approval among political independents and 10% of Republicans. 30% approval among people who are independent. 
Even in his own party, a quarter of Democrats disapprove of Biden or withholding judgment, 19% and 4% respectively. So a quarter of his own party. You remember Donald Trump, for all the things that people say about Trump, Donald Trump had like 90% approval rating with Republicans all throughout his presidency, sometimes 95%, sometimes 98%, depending on how you polled it. You never saw a quarter of Republicans disapproving of Trump, but here we are. Analyzing data, going back to Harry Truman's administration, only two presidents have an approval rating this low into their first State of the Union address that Biden is delivering on Tuesday. Those were Donald Trump at 36% and Gerald Ford at 37%. Disapproval has been higher by a non-significant three percentage points only for Trump. And we will remind you that that is with Donald Trump having every weight of every institution and every messaging organ in our government and outside of our government in corporate media acting against him. This, Joe Biden, is pulling down the same numbers with every single corporate messaging organ and every single governmental administrative organ in his favor. Biden's fortune, in turn, spell out trouble for his party at this point. Produced for ABC by Langer Research Associates, Republican congressional candidates have a 49 to 42% advantage over Democrats among registered voters, widening to 54 to 41% among those who say they are registered for a certain party to vote in November. Goodness gracious. For 54 to 41 is the Republican advantage over Democrats, ladies and gentlemen. We're not talking a red wave. People say red wave. It's red. It's red nuclear. It's red nuclear. We, we have a hard time to like come up with the, the, the right analogy, right? A red nuclear meteor flying in from space, striking DNC headquarters. That's what we're talking about here. If you're looking at a 54 to 41% advantage for Republicans. The result among registered voters is very similar to what it was in November, 51-41% reported at the time, the largest Republican lead for midterm vote preferences in history, dating back to the original, dating back to the original ABC Washington Post polls. In new data among independents who are registered to vote, often swing voters, the GOP candidate leads by 14 points. Wow. <laughs> That's just like, what do, you, what do you have? 14 point approval rating, approval, 14%, 14 point advantage for GOP candidates among independents. It's just astonishing to look at these numbers. If these numbers play out, you really will see 100 seats for 100 years. The results are buttressed by a shift in partisan identification In four ABC News Washington Post polls going back to January and September of last year, Democrats outnumbered Republicans by an advantage of seven points. In November, and again by this poll, in contrast, it's a non-significant one point, meaning that people are not identifying as Democrats any longer. In line with vote preference, Americans by a 50 to 40 percent say they would rather see the next Congress controlled by Republicans. Woof. Again, suppression poll saying that a 10-point advantage to Republicans for control of Congress. To act as a check to Biden is why they want to see the Congress go Republican and Democrats who support Biden's agenda. So they want to see these people shoved down into the ash heap of history. Democrats led by a 16-point advantage on the measure going into Trump's midterm election in 2018 when they won 40 seats. It looks now more like it did under Barack Obama in 2010 when Republicans won 13 and 16 seats respectively, 2014 and 2010, saying that Republican gains in both those years, 13 and 63 seats respectively, total of 76 seats. 76 seats, man, for Barack Obama, 2014-2010 elections. Woof, and it gets worse. 75% of Americans rate the economy's condition as not good or poor, 
And most in the ABC Washington Post polls said that it is awful. These are the worst polls since 2013. The public by a three to one margin says it's gotten worse rather than better since Biden took office. Just all bad news. It's just, just, there's just not a single piece of good news. We tweeted it. Name one thing that Joe Biden has done that made your life better. And nobody could name a single thing. Made the lives of Americans better. No one could name it. By a three to one margin, it's gotten worse rather than better. Personal impacts are apparent as well, as noted. Just 17% reported being better off financially now than when Biden took office. Twice as many, 35%, are worse off. A negative score on a measure is reliably indicated political trouble since Ronald Reagan popularized the concept in his successful 1980 presidential campaign. Among other notable instances, it was negative for H.W. Bush on his way to losing re-election in 1992, damaging to Obama early in his presidency as the country struggled to get out of the Great Recession. To be sure, there's a political aspect to economic attitudes, particularly when the president is mentioned by name. 54% of Republicans say they've gotten worse under Biden. Only 9% of Democrats go there. But it's 42% among independents and among Democrats, 33% saying they're better off. Thank you for watching. We are 100% independent news. Are you sick of being lied to? We certainly are. That's why we started this channel. But we can't do it without you. We can't keep going without your help. All we ask is that you click like and subscribe and share this video. It's free and it keeps us going. It keeps us growing. It keeps us getting the truth out there to break the rotted corporate media infrastructure that wants to lie to you every single day, wants to corrupt your narratives, your truth, your story, and your very society. So support us by clicking like, clicking subscribe, and thank you, patriots.